Hi guys, it's me Malcolm, the movie Wizard of Oz himself. And and as you can see, we're halfway done with this day. Day and it will be 2020. God, I will miss miss this decade. It was fun. So so you may have known my top 10 best movies of 2019 and my guilty pleasures for the 2010s. But what about all the best movies, movies from the other years? Okay? So for this video, I will be doing my top 10 best movies of the decade. <laughs> this will be a fun video to do. For this list, I will be doing all of my best movies, movies, I mean, so far we had lots and lots of best movies of the 2010s, am I right? Yeah, but I decided to narrow it down to 10. I'll be doing movies from 2010 to 2019, okay? Alright, let's get started. Number 10, which kind of brings all the joy to fans and the critics, The Avengers. Oh my god, this vid video was marvelous. I love every single minute of it. It, ever since Iron Man started the MCU, we have been getting different, different heroes like the Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow and Hawkeye, oh, you knew that they were going to make an ensemble team of those heroes. Oh my god, this is the video that started a really big franchise. It was the height of its fame. I do love the part where, oh, where Iron Man and Thor battled in the woods, woods or... or or how, mm, what else? Oh, how the Hulk beat, beat the crap out of Loki and and after call, calling him a puny god. <laughs> oh, and who can forget the ensemble, ensemble team, team in the middle of New York? I mean, we all clap for that like crazy. Oh, and who can forget the epic post credit scene with not only with the the Avengers eating shawarma, but also the entrance of Thanos. Oh my god. And the rest is history. Okay, number nine, which is a comeback to a Disney classic in 2004, Incredibles 2. I must say, it was really, really incredible, and it was worth the wait. I mean, ever since we saw the ending of the Ar the Underminer Miner terrorizing the town, you knew that it's possible they would make more movies of this movie. Oh my god, I love every single minute of it. I absolutely love the new heroes, like Foy, Foy, Brick, and... And, oh my god, who else? Oh, Screech. I really do admire Void. I do like her powers, though. It definitely reminds me of Blink or Nightcrawler from the X-Men movies. Oh. And I did love, love it how Violet overreact at when she found out that, oh my god, Tony Rydenshire was, memory was, re, was erased because he found out that F Violet is a superhero. Oh, and I do love the tra train scene where, oh, where Elastic Girl stopped, stopped the train. And I, and who can forget Jack-Jack going crazy with his powers? I mean, he had so many powers. I mean, multiplying, uh, turning into fire, becoming a monster, also teleporting, Light and all that jazz. Oh my god. <laughs> and I do like it how 
how Edna overreacted to Galbaki. Elastigirl Super Suit is by Galbaki. Explain yourself. <laughs> Gosh, she was so pissed. <sighs> she was quite the diva. Okay, number eight, which was an absolute perfect ending to this epic YA franchise. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Oh my God, this movie was so emotional, brilliant, and an awesome finale to this series. I love every single minute of it. It had great, great epic scenes, though. Oh, I do love the part where Harry it Harry revealed to Professor Snape and told the truth of what happened between Snape and Dumbledore. Oh my God! I do love it how how Professor McGonagall protected Harry Harry and battled against him, and he went off like a coward he is. Oh, and I do love the part of the shocking twist of the pensive of Snape's memories. Oh my god. I can't believe he was the good guy the whole time in secret. I mean I mean all the all the shocking reveals how Dumbledore was already dying, so Snape had to kill him as a mercy. Mercy. How Snape Snape enchanted that Patronus, Patronus to lead Harry to the sword. Oh my God. God, and all because he loved Lily. And I do love the part where they hunt down those whole cruxes. I mean, destroying the cup, uh, the tiara from Rowena Ravenclaw, and not to mention that wicked snake, Nagini. Oh. And it was a per, and I do love the ending. It was perfect. I can't believe, leave, leave, all the heroes grow grown up and have their own kids. It's, I mean, Harry ha having his own child named Albus Severus Potter, named after two of the great, great head ma masters in Hogwarts. Oh. I really do care about this movie. Oh, this was one of my favorite Harry Potters. Okay, um, number seven, which started the DC Universe, and it has the mixed reviews, but so far, shockingly, this was one of the best movies of 2013. Man of Steel. Oh my God. It, it showed us the reason that... Superman can still flies and still got it. I mean, it had great scenes though. I love love the opening scene, how everything happened in Krypton. Um oh yeah. Oh, I do love love it how Kal-El started his first fly, flying lessons. Lessons I got the hang of it. Oh. And it was you know, it was very emotional how I, how what happened to Jonathan Kent, his father. Oh my God, that was brutal. And I do love, love, love the fight scene between, not only between him and Zod, but also between Feora and that other big guy, guy in Smallville. Oh, that was crazy. I really do love it. <sighs> And it, really, and it really started a good French, good fandom of franchise. Okay, here's number six, which is a comeback to the Harry Potter series. Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them. Oh my God. This movie was so good and it was so magical. I really do love, love, love the creatures in, the, in this one. The Niffler, the Bow Truckle. The alchemy, alchemy, the alchemy, the oh, oh yeah, the demi guys, Dougal. I really do love him. He was so cute, and I do love the powers they have, like Dougal, who could predict the pu who could see the future, 
future. The, the bow truckle pricket who could pick locks. <laughs> I mean, he has very skeleton keys for hands. And I do love the Niffler. He was a menacing, menacing, menacing pest. <laughs> he does love shiny things, though. <sighs> and I do admire the fire this cast. Eddie, Met Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander. Boy, he is a great hero other than Harry Potter. And I do love his allies, Tina and Goldie and Jacob Kowalski. They were perfect. And I was shocked that Jason, I mean, Johnny Depp played Gellert Grindelwald himself. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, here's number five, which started the monster first. first and it's one of my favorite ones in 2014. Godzilla. Oh my God. This is a great movie we all been waiting for. You know, at first I thought Godzilla would be the villain, like in that terrible adaption in 1998. But turns out he, this monster is one of the good guys. I mean, he did stop the Mutos, which is great. I really do love that scene. I really do love his entrance, how he showed up in Hawaii and stopped one of them. <sighs> and and to think they made us decide to make a franchise out of this one ever since they did Kong Skull Island. Oh. oh. This is one of... I gotta admit, Godzilla is definitely one of my favorite monster heroes ever other than the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> okay, here's number four, which is part of the Transformer series. Well, not exactly. It's a reboot. But this one definitely broke the curse of all of those other movies. Bumblebee. I must say, this was the best Transformer movie ever. I mean, it has a, it had great reviews from both the fans and critics. Oh my god. And I really do love Haley Steinfeld. Well, she was the best. I do like the bond between between him, him and Bumblebee, he, they had a great ship, great friendship other than Hiccup and Toothless in How to Train Your Dragon. And sometimes Bumblebee definitely reminds me of Herbie from the Love Bug movie series. <sighs> oh, mm. I do like how it's set in the 80s. I mean, the 80s is definitely my number one favorite area. Oh, all the music, the way how they look, and all that jazz. And I really do admire John Cena. He was a badass mother. And I was shocked that the two evil Decepticons were played the voices of Angelina Bassett and Justin Thurl. Oh my god. What a shocker. And let's not forget how Dylan O'Brien from Teen Wolf and the Maze Runner series did the voice of Bumblebee. Well, not too much, since his voice was was broken. Sucks. I would love to hear more of that. Okay, here's number three, which was a epic, epic new DC movie in 2017, and how it has great reviews from both the fans and the critics themselves. Wonder Woman. This movie was such a triumph. I love every single minute of it. In fact, I do love anything that is Greek mythology. Oh, she was the best superhero to go on. I do love the part how she walked on no man's land wearing her armor oh, and deflecting those bullets. I do, and I do love... I absolutely love the villain Ares, the god of war. Oh my god. I was so shocked that it was Sir Patrick himself. I thought it was Ludendorff. But damn, what a twist. I mean, 
Ares was such a badass mother himself. I mean, how he could conjure up we weapons and and create lightning like his father Zeus. <sighs> and I do love the shocking scene how he told told Diana that she's the god killer and not the sword. Oh my god. I and you gotta admit, I do love how the way she did. She is kind, honest, honest and independent. Oh, and I really do love the lasso. I mean, I would love to you know, I do imagine this lasso being mass produced. How other badass women women that I love well, would have their own own to use against their enemies. <sighs> Okay, here's number two, which started a new a new fandom in in 2015 by Disney himself. Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Oh my God, this movie was incredible. It was absolute action pack. I do admire every single minute of this one. Oh. To be honest, it's just like A New Hope 2.0. How it has a new story, new characters, new plot, and all that jazz. Oh, I really, oh, it really did my, took my breath away. It had some great moments, though. I do love the, love the scene in Jakku where Finn and Rey escaped from Jakku from those those TIE Fighters. Um, I do love the shocking scene how Rey is a Jedi. Oh my god. When she gra gra took that lightsaber. Oh my god. You knew that battle was on between him. I mean her against Kylo Ren. Oh, it was amazing. And I do like it how it ended. How Rey found Luke. Luke in, Luke in that island, uh, and try to give, his, try to give his lightsaber. <sighs> it's amazing. <sighs> so, here's number one, which came out this year, and it's been one of the most best DC movies ever to see. Shazam. You know what? No, nothing in the world can destroy the magic in this movie. I love every single minute of it. I love all the scene. I love the epic scenes. I love the part where Shazam, Shazam started started his train of what powers he can do. Um, I do love the oh, I do love the epic fight scene in the carnival between between not just. Not just Billy, but also his, also his friends. How they become superheroes themselves. Oh my God, they were so awesome and badass. I mean, they were just like, just like the Power Rangers. Oh. It's crazy. Oh. I really do admire Zachary Levi. He is the best actor to pull off the hero Shazam, hands down. Oh, this movie is such the best. Okay, guys. Those are my top 10 best movies of the decade. So, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. And have. be sure you all have a great day. New Year's Eve party today. I mean, tonight. Bye. Happy New Year.